welcome to today's edition of uh, Pulse Pulse. And today we are having an exclusive chat uh, with one man uh, who's done very well in terms of uh, his club football and now he's doing something to help society. You know how oftentimes you talk about footballers and what they've done in their career and also what they are doing after football. Well, he has taken it upon himself uh, to help nurture talent. People that are coming up, those that want to become like him, those that want to take education serious uh, in terms of whatever that he's done and to help them so that they can reach the heights they want to reach in their career, being it football, education or any career they want to take uh, in, in this life. So uh, I'm privileged uh, to introduce to you Fifi Baden, uh, a former player uh, who played in the MLS, that's the Major League Soccer in America with Columbus Crew. And if you talk about Columbus Crew, that's where uh, uh, some of our Blasters players, Harry Snaffle, uh, we have Jonathan Mensah, we also have once Abu Mohammed, and then Lala Abu Bakar, all these players uh, play for Columbus Crew in the uh, MLS, that's the Major Soccer League. So, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Mm. All right, so uh, first, uh, let's, we will talk about what you've been doing uh, for your foundation and also what you did previously, I mean, when you were playing at Columbus Crew. But, I mean, yeah, we are in the moment of the World Cup and we've always been talking about World Cup, World Cup, who is winning it. It's been an exciting tournament uh, so far. It's even hard to predict which team will win. What, what, what's been your view about the World Cup so far? I think the, the World Cup has been really unpredictable. Um, if you look at um, this World Cup, not even a, one single African team made it to the next round. So it's kind of a little bit of a, a disappointment. Um, but like you said, it's, it's hard to predict who is going to win it. Um, and I think part of the reason why is because of the introduction of the VAR, which you know have brought a lot of changes in the game. But looking at the way things are going, I'm pretty much confident that Brazil can win it. Okay, so you think that Brazil will win this year's tournament, not any other team uh, in the quarterfinals, but Brazil? Uh, yes. What have you seen about the Brazilian team that makes you uh, optimistic that they will win? Yeah, if you look at you know last year's World Cup, they hosted it and they, they got humiliated by Germany. Yeah. And so going into this year, you, you see a, a different Brazil. They have a different mentality. And you can tell Neymar and, and you know the other players are very determined to, to bring home the cup. So I think they can do it. So you mentioned how Africa, uh, for the first time in 32 years, we couldn't make it to the next stage of the competition. Yeah, Black Stars have been there three times. The first time they were able to make it to the one of 16, second quarterfinals. The last one, we couldn't progress out of the group stage. What do you think is wrong with the African teams? Yeah, it's, it's, again, it's very shocking that we couldn't get any African team. And I, I believe that if Ghana had qualified, I think we would have gone pretty far. Um, I think looking at the African team, the way they played in the World Cup, I think they lacked the, the quality in the final third. And what I mean by that is they, they work really hard, they do all the right things, but then when they get to you know, scoring their goals, that's where they lack that quality. And I think if um, you know they can improve on that going into next year's uh, work, um, the following World Cup, I think they can do well. Mm. All right. So we, we we are here having a chat uh, with Fifi. I mean Fifi, a former uh, player who now has a foundation, uh, which uh, he will tell us uh, more about. But uh, let, let's look at you as a footballer. Those days, your career, you are based in the U.S. You played for Columbus Crew, one of the best teams in the MLS. Take me through your days at Columbus Crew. How was it for you? I think it was it was a great experience um, playing for Columbus Crew. Um, you know, I played in college in college before I got drafted to play there. Um, the game it's very different when you play in college and compared to in the MLS. At the professional level, the game is you know at a very high speed, and so you need to really you know train, get yourself mentally and physically prepared for every training session and every game. And so I think overall it was a great experience for me and really improved my game a lot. Oftentimes I've heard people talk about how the MLS is for those going on retirement. I remember very well when David Akam was leaving Sweden for MLS yeah, there were so people were talking about how David Akam is on top form and that he should focus on his playing career in Europe than going to a league that is for those retiring. Is that the case? 
Um, I honestly don't think that is the case. I think the MLS is improving every year. Um, I think one of the biggest thing, if you look at even China, they're trying to improve their sports, and so they're signing a lot of big names um, to improve that sport. Um, in the U.S., they have all these other sports that they focus on, like American football. They've got a lot of the basketball, which are big, and so they're trying to improve the, the soccer aspect as well. So I think that's why they bring in some, some of these big names to get the fans um, coming to the games, and and that's the main reason why they they bring those players on board, and just to improve the sport, get the fans excited to go to the games, and ultimately I think it's gonna get to where it needs to be. Okay, so you're one of the few players that started playing in the MLS uh, as a, a Ghanaian. Now you can boost off uh, more than ten Ghanaians playing in the MLS. I come uh, with Philadelphia. We also have more than six players. Six Ghanaians playing at Columbus Crew, New England Revolution. There's a Ghanaian there. When you go down to Miami, there's a Ghanaian there. Latif Blessing doing very well for Los Angeles uh, FC. How happy are you that when you look back, looking at what you did, and now we have so many Ghanaians playing the MLS? I think I'm really, really happy about that. Um, you know, I wish my time at Columbus Crew, I had that many Ghanaians in the league. I actually makes it, you know, fun to play. Um, and so I'm, I'm really happy to see all these Ghanaian players, you know, playing them MLS and helping to improve that sport. And I'm sure you definitely would want to encourage some of our viewers, those that are playing here, uh, if they one day want to be in the MLS, you encourage them to, you know, take that opportunity. Yeah, I would definitely encourage them to, to do that. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people have a different perspe perspective about the MLS. Um, and I think, like I said, the sport is growing mm -hmm. and they really do need a lot of big names to improve it. And it's honestly, I think it's one of the toughest, you know, leagues to play in. Okay. Away from that, you are not based here in Ghana, you are based in the U.S., but you are here on the course. I mean, w tell me about your foundation, the name and what you guys are into. So the, the, the main vision of FIFI Soccer Foundation really stemmed from my upbringing here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, it was really tough for my family um, pro to provide for me and my siblings. So I had to, you know, sell kerosene, sell wa pure water on the streets to support them financially until I got the opportunity to join this um, soccer academy in Ghana called the Right to Dream Academy. And so through Right to Dream, I got a scholarship to go to the U.S., and then ultimately ended up playing for Columbus Crew. So um, I wanted to do this, something similar. I wanted to give back to, um, you know, especially, especially children in need. Mm -hmm. And there's no place to do that than coming back home and doing it. I think there's a lot of need here in Ghana. And um, we're just trying to create the opportunity for these children, um, giving them the best education they can get. Uh, and then using sports as a tool as well to really give them a better future. And since when have you been doing this? Um, it's been going on for about two years now, and it's, it's been growing, improving every day. Um, we started off, you know, we bought a land in, in this place called Loom, um, and then we rented a facility in Anyanya. Uh, we brought the children in, they board there, um, we provide them the food, the education, the sports that they need, um, and then some it, sort of a soccer academy. It is c some kind of a soccer academy, but we don't focus only on on um, yes soccer. on so, f on football or soccer. Um, we do all other sports. Mm -hmm. um, overall, we we just want to give opportunity, especially to orphans and poor children. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's different about what you're doing this year? Because last year you did something, and this year you're doing uh, something. What was different about this year's uh, own? So this year we want to really make sure we have our structures in place. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get some sponsorship coming into the foundation. So I want to make sure I have all the structures in place where I can bring people to come in and look at what we, we've done and the improvement that's taking place, and also really restructure our curriculum to help the children 
um, so that they can also get an opportunity to go to the U.S. Mm. Well, it's good you mentioned that. That was going to be my ne next question. You know how people are always uh, talk about, yeah, we go for some of these programs and at the end, we still stay here. And this is the second one you're doing. So at what point will some of these kids get the opportunity, like you got a scholarship outside to play for Columbus Crew? At what point will some of these kids also get that, such a, a, an opportunity through your foundation? So I think it will all come down to the children. What we are trying to instill in them is really um, hard work. Work hard, stay disciplined, and be motivated to achieve what you want to achieve. So we want these children to set goals for themselves and you know provide the opportunity for, for them to be able to go to the U.S. and get a quality education. But again, it will come down to how many of these kids will actually take education serious. And that's the, the point we're trying to um, carry to them. Thank you very much, Fifi. Thank you so much for having me. Right. So that was uh, Fifi Bidin, a former player uh, who played uh, his club football for Columbus Crew in the MLS, now in Ghana, undertaking uh, projects, projects that will help our uh, kids, projects that will help uh, those that want to play football, those that want to engage in any other thing that they want to, uh, to build a good life for themselves. Thanks so much. Uh, for watching. I'm Benedict Tosu. See you later.